isolating every single aspect of the draft radar. Even the isolated pickoffs is on the side of Blackness International. That is true. Now we are on the cusp here of game number three. Got to remind you guys, Blacklist International right now at 2-0 against Echo. One win away. Ooh, back yeah. booking their bus ticket to M5. Because it's not a plane ticket. Yeah, it's a bus, it's ticket. A bus ticket. Literally it's a bus <laughs> ticket. Because <laughs> I get a remind, just a, you know, a uh, general reminder to everybody. General reminder. Philippines, M5 host. All right. So whoever wins in this game will yeah. book their bus ticket. Yeah, that's why these... To here! <laughs> to here, my dear! <laughs> That's why we understand why these teams are passionate, really passionate to win this a game. E even RSG, even Onyx, even Omega, they really want this because we're going to have M5 in the Philippines. All right, looking at the emblems, it's a classic Beatrix with the Thrift, Tier 1 Talent, Assassin Emblem. But interestingly, Yaoi, with a full set of tank alongside a Wilderness Blessing, provides mobility in the river. river. But Yaoi is not gonna, able to connect onto Renegade. Very interesting choices here being done, obviously by uh, Yaoi here. And I think he's very much aware that if you draft this last pick, you know you're down. You're, you know you have, you're at a disadvantage, right? Yeah. So he's just making sure that, you know what, everything has to go according to plan. So I have a lot of faith in Tic Tac, a lot of, a lot of faith in Trevor. Yeah, but they're not gonna do this out of the blue. Yeah, I, I understand, but you have to you have to be concerned, right? You have to be curious as well with why they picked up the Kufra against the Paramis. Like, Minotaur has been really popular versus this hero. I mean, like, other set heroes are also available, like the Rock, but they opted to go with the Kufra. It is rocking that Paramis, however, so it is gonna be able to sustain more in the early game, but he doesn't have that same level of mobility and sustain that other, uh, you know, other popular position 5 has. That's like true. again, the Rafaela, the Minotaur, which are really, really good. Supposedly good against the lineup of Blacklist International. Now the very first Turtle is here. Seems like Blacklist has a better draft on this Turtle. But Echo, they want to answer right back with a penalty zone coming in from Sanford. Now the other Realm is casted. It's going to be a retribution battle. Carl wow. Kitty with a good pin down! Very messy. And first blood plus the Turtle. Wow, the chaos created by Sanford as well. Yes. And yeah, we really helped Echo there. And they get a very crucial first turtle and the first okay. blood. Okay, this is just classic Echo with the Aoi. If they win one good team fight and one mini objective on the turtle, immediately heading straight towards the, uh, the jungle area of the enemy. Really just controlling the reactions coming out from Blacklist International, which does free up the map for the side lanes and of course Carl TZ on the jungle. Yeah, Carl TZ definitely looking like they are more poised here. And I've seen him on the Akai. He's more aggressive on the, on the Lord and Turtle steals. And he's definitely more aggressive in positioning as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Especially since Yaoi is in the picture with the Kufra. So we can expect Echo. This is going to be a different kind of flavor for them. The aggressive uh, kind of Echo. The risk takers kind of Echo. Yeah, the uh, Echo Express, the House of Highlights. Speaking about highlights, that was a very good heavy spin by uh, Carl Tizzi. Mm, four heroes from Blacklist. No, yeah, we... Although it was Blacklist fault though. Yeah, that is true. Not afraid at all because Blacklist, they grouped up a little too early <laughs> and they maybe overestimated their damage. Everyone was inside a turtle pit. Exactly. And Carl was like, okay. Uh, thank you, right? <laughs> I, I would just say thank you in that situation and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. 40 seconds in, the second turtle will respawn. You now still, both teams, they really want to go for this objective. Yaoi charging, he's not going to commit it. Yeah. Good yeah. decision for Echo. And that's true, that's actually exactly what he should do. He just he got to keep it here, got to keep it close to the chest with his teammates. Don't jump in on your own. That's very crucial here. Yaoi just should not get too excited as well. Yaoi. Speaking of excited, Yaoi commits on to Oheb. They're ouch, not. Ouch, ouch, ouch. ouch. Oh, oh. That's a Bruno. That's a Bruno. That's a Bruno. That's a Bruno. Bruno. That's a Bruno. It's going to hurt. Yeah, that's not a Yuzong, but it's a Bruno. It, it, <laughs> you, you also, another mistake a lot of teams do yeah. is they underestimate the Bruno as well. Yeah. It, you know, sometimes it feels like you are able to take out the Bruno with mini pockets of damage. But Yaoi. over time, when it stacks, you know, stack up, Ooh, he does so much damage. To Edward. They commit the ultimate, but the Never Realm is there. But look at Carl with a pin down. No, he's going to escape. The turtle will be reset. And now Echo, they don't have the luxury of Yaoi's skills. And the heavy spin. Oh, you know what? Ba Blacklist are battled and bruised, but they are okay. going to be at least not giving away a death here. Yeah. It's Echo with 
material number two. Despite using the skills on the side of Echo, it is where you start seeing the uh, confidence from Yaoi on the Kufra. Even after that, they call for the turtle take because Yaoi still had the jump. He is going to be able to zone out that Fredrin. And since we knew, knew it, he saw the Kufra charging up the jump. And that's why they backed off. Blacklist did not want to re-engage because Echo, they still have the firepower. Even though they don't have the crowd controls anymore, they have enough damage. Whew. Now we are a little bit on the advantage for Echo. That's exactly where they want to be. It's not as much of an advantage as I thought they would be in. Uh, but so far, I think they can... If they keep this up, they should be pretty good. They're also waiting for that power spike from Benny Cutie's Beatrix, after yeah. all. Yaoi with a good seal, uh, charging the Tiger Man. And more of the Bravest Fighter. Evades the potential death, but three members of Echo want to take down this turret. But still, Edward, he sensed it. He, he sensed that Yaoi was there. He sensed it, man, and he knew. And so far, Benny Cutie will still have the advantage in terms of uh, pushing, but the gold is on the side of Ohem for some reason. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, the Bruno was able to uh, like freely farm up again because of the uh, uh, the movement of Black has, has been able to move off against Echo. They are sort of now controlling the uh, you know the mid game momentum, wherein they can they can now start playing aggressive versus Echo because they have they just have so much spiel for this Bruno while Echo is still waiting for the items on their side. All right, so now Echo. They're waiting for it. They know they can take him, and now they're trying to push back. Blacklist are under the turret. Ohead very exposed here. Sanji has that terrify. Yaoi! No, it's not going to connect. And now Echo, they have to retreat because their initiation is just wasted. Ooh. Yeah. The thing is, even, even if they land the jump from the Kufra, you have to keep in mind that, that there is another realm yeah, from Yue and also a purify on Ohead. So it, this Bruno is going to be hard to catch. If you want to take out this Bruno, it has to be brute force damage coming out from Echo. And that's exactly what it's trying to do right now. With the penalty going out, I feel like this should be the time for Blacklist to go, but Echo, their five-man oh, zone Sanji. here. Sanji. Oheb's very far away. Eagle now wasted, but Oheb oh, really my goodness. farming and pushing in the top lane. This is the trade that Blacklist wants to get. This Again, is a trade. Referring to K2B, right? Just trade efficiently. If you're not taking Turtle, and if the Beatrix wants to combo up with the Kufra, punish the opposite side of the map, and that is what Ohip did. He, take, he took out the tower, got some gold, even though they lose out on the last mini objective of the game, which is the Turtle, you're still pulling out ahead in terms of Norm and the Marksman Department. And it's crucial because Blacklist International, majority of their damage output in their upcoming spike is in the Bruno. Yeah, the maximum amount of gold that you can actually get for the Bruno is here. And that's actually super crucial now. So, they, Blacklist, they got something. They're giving away every turtle yep. so far, but the gold is in the right hands. I love the fact that there's no Dominus Ice on the side of Blacklist International. Like, they don't need it. They just need to buy the blade armor, make, you know, the, the life of uh, the Beatrix Yowie. living hell. Yowie. Yowie's looking at it. He's waiting for it. Sanji's actually very close, too. So, his Terrify, comboed with the Kufra, can actually take down anyone. So, also, Echo, they're threatening. But they're not pulling the trigger. Still, yeah. uh, you know, despite the addition of Yaoi, you know, they're a loose cannon, they're really aggressive, but still the discipline is there for the workers. I mean, yep. it's a match point for Blacklist. So it's a good sign that they're taking risks, but they are calculated risks. Yep, that's Again, true. Talk about echo ecosystem, right? You are playing into that blueprint where you start playing with your timings. And Echo, they know that their timings are uh, upcoming with the Blade of Despair of the Beatrix, uh, from the Beatrix, but Black Ascent National, it's also the same. Like, both of them are gonna hit their timings in a bit, but everything that matters is, again, Black Ascent National just has a lot of way, uh, ways of dealing, uh, in terms of dealing with the Kufra. That's right, so now, the Kufra. We're, uh, have we actually seen the payoff yet so far Not for yet. the Kufra? We haven't, right? I feel like it's always singular things. And I, know, I think you're start, I'm starting to make sense with that Minotaur pick you were talking about, Midnight. Yeah. Echo just has one kill, and that was a kill where, uh, you know, that was a kill from a turtle fight before, wherein Carlty was, was able to land four, four man heavy spin. Yeah, but exactly. that was about it. That's basically it. So we're looking for some stocks, some return of investment here yeah. so far. And, and I would say Echo, they're getting small stuff, but they need to take that win. They need to take that win of a team fight. We need and a, Blacklist right now are pushing it in. We need a Giga Chad moment from Yaoi. Giga Chad moment. Giga Chad moment from 
Yahweh is expected. Now Tyrant's Revenge is there. Renegade! Renegade, but the Nether Realm will be cast as well. Oh, look at Medicuity! Takes down Renegade. Now Carl Tizzy pins down Sensui. But Sensui oh, is getting the damage now. Edward's going right after the back line. Oh, Oheb is now down. Thanks to Sanford. That's two members down from the Lacklist. 3v5! Echo, five members alive. Sanford's still alive! Sanford is still alive, but Edward is no longer in the picture. You it flickers out, and Echo will secure an uncontested lord. Oh my we were asking for the payoff. It is right here, folks. Oh. Seeing the effect, the maximum effect of the crowd control based lineup that Echo has. Echo system, by the way. Yaoi with the jump in, Renegade dash in front of that bush. He was attempting to block the jump from Yaoi, but after that, even though the Netherrealm was used, the timing from Bandicuti with the Bennett's Rage, he was able to take out the targets under the Netherrealm. So, so far, Yaoi's performing exceptional with a good uh, pick off onto Renegade, but the thing is, that's not even his best hero. That's right. The Cho. He was actually top global Cho during MPLP, uh, MPL Philippines Season 12. Yeah. That's, that's the fun thing here, because obviously Blacklist, they can't ignore the healing and the shielding meta of yep. the supports right now, but they always have that in their oh, pocket. Oh, Yaoi, Yaoi, Yaoi. Yaoi, right Yowie! there, and it's gonna go on to Oheb, but Oheb Purify. successfully evades it. The Purify was there, Netherum as well, and now Carl TZ wants to pin down Sensui, but that's gonna be too much for Echo. The tower is still there, Sanford has Melty Zone out, but the Fraser Strap will actually catch him, and now Sanford will go down, but look at the response coming in from Yaoi. Oh! Well, double kills coming in. Triple! The Filipino Sniper! Oheb! Gets a triple kill! He's sniping with balls, ladies and gents. These balls, these long range balls of death coming yep. in from Oham. Definitely furious balls coming out from De Bruno right now. Blacklist International again just has a lot of ways to deal with the Kufra. The Purify from Oham restarted that fight for Blacklist and the Netherrealm follow up from Yue as well as the catch. This time around, Sanford didn't have the flicker to catch the Bruno off guard. That's why Oheb was just able to freely hit from the backside. Echo definitely still at an advantage still, especially in terms of gold. The Blacklist finally are able to walk out on the map. Yep, no backline access for Echo that time around. And Oheb was just really good in terms of positioning this hero. Now he does have that Malefic Roar, which is going to be scary for Echo to deal with. Even though you, don't, you do have the damage, you do have the jump. If you don't get the jumps, like if you don't execute well for Echo, Blacklist is going to punish. But that is a big question. If you're Blacklist, you should not be confident in proposing that question to Echo. Because again, this is the House of Highlights. With a lineup like this, though, you also put a lot of effort, a lot of weight onto the shoulders of Oheb. Yep. He has to be super crucial. He has to be super precise. Perfect position. In his positioning each and every time. And if he messes up one time, the Echo Express, yep. they're going to overrun. Oh, Carl. Okay, going back to the thought of Oheb positioning perfectly, he did mess up one time where he used the dash, and Sanford was just, okay, you don't have dash, you don't have flicker. I'm going to just jump in, all right? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to kill you. So they do have to, uh, you know, keep this Therizla in check. For Blacklist International, always look for where this uh, where this uh, that is this, uh, where this that is, that is coming from. Where is Sanford, especially during this next Lord fight? You know, actually, apart from that, Echo also has to watch out for being too over aggressive. Watch they have out. the 3K lead and they have the Kufra, so it's very tempting, specifically for Yaoi to go for those engages. Despite there's uh, going to be a tower Yowie, or Yowie, something Yowie. else, and now Yaoi, so we with the taunt, so we nice know. taunt there. We know where the members of Echo are. Oh, look at this. It's a complete reversal yeah. of last game where now the rest of the map is pushing up against Blacklist yeah. and it's Echo who are actually in the advantage. So this Wilderness Blessing from the Kufra is making such a big difference from Echo because Yaoi is now able to reset versus Blacklist. Like the punish, it's mitigated because the Kufra just runs very, very fast. Oh, Sensui goes in with a double taunt. Now oh, no, no, penalty zone. Penalty zone onto Sensui. Oh, this favorite oh, Blacklist! Blacklist. Blacklist. Edward. Edward with the uh, bravest fighter. Okay. Expended every single ultimate expended as well as the circling Renegade's eagle. Renegade's going in. Renegade's going hot. Renegade went in 20,000 HP for this lord as well as Sui with a taunt. Right. Oh, but look at that! Carl Tizi with the pin down. But Yue once again with a clutch Nether Realm. But um, but Sachi as well had that oh. Nether Realm. Both teams. No heavy spin. No heavy spin. Sui as well. out every single ultimate. But who's gonna fall down first? And it's Yowie! 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 Tyrant's Rage! But Tetsui gets the Lord! And now Oheb gets to kill as well! Oh, Edward! Edward! But look at that! Echo answers right back with a three-man down to take down Blacklist! Ah, this is 
high-level MLBB at its finest, ladies and gents. You do not ask a return of investment from Yaoi because he will return more. He is paying out dividends right now. Yaoi with a Tyrant's Rage Flicker combination out of nowhere. That's like Randy Orton with out of nowhere. RKO. Absolutely. <laughs> that is correct, the moon, though. And it's when you least expect it. It's right after everything already happened. And not just that, the connection, the synergy from Echo right after that, penalty zone came into play for Echo. This is the thing that we need to worry, I mean, Blacklist needs to worry about against Echo. They are going to be able to execute. If you think about the highlights that could happen, 100% it'll happen. Yaoi, the embodiment of the House of Highlights. Moniker. The Blacklist still standing tall. They're the aggressors right now as they take down the middle lane turret. And just like that, Blacklist might be able to even out the score in game three. Yeah, they basically neutralize on the Lord take. Blacklist are still going to be able to push it out. Yeah. Mac macro is still macro. very, very big for Blacklist International. Even Huge. though Echo is leading by 2k, again, their main concern is that they need to take out this Bruno. If they don't, even the Beatrix does not have like enough firepower against the front line as a Blacklist International, especially with the reset. Although Sanji does have the capability of just copying the Netherrealm, their main concern is that during these Lord fights, Cartesi will always be in front of Blacklist International and he will be susceptible to be, uh, you know, to being picked off because of the presence of the pull from Yue and of course the damage output coming out from Oheb. Now we're seeing the reason why we were a bit questioning the Beatrix pick coming in. Uh, you, your, your instincts were actually kicking in there, <laughs> I think. Because the Beatrix is having a hard time actually reaching targets as well to yeah. clean up. I mean, he does have like the Sniper or the Renner to uh, you know, sort of like add another layer of damage on the front lines for Echo. But you have to be really careful what guns you choose. Because if Blacklist sees that you don't have the right mix of guns, they will just you know, execute. In, uh, in terms of team fighting, because Yue is rocking that, yeah. uh, uh, you know, flicker, so Black as International can just engage in front of Echo. Most of the time, uh, Yue is never around, so always cast at one point. I oh mean, yeah. Th th that's why Oheb, despite the aggression of Yaoi, only has two deaths. That's a crazy stat line, that by the way. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's a crazy so stat line. Heals. Yeah. Where'd that come from? Freden and Akai, you know, uh, the way that they heal up is just constantly using their spells. Well, well that's with Freden. Akai as, is more yeah. of like second skill. So. As well as the um, helmet, the Guardian helmet. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you're right. They've been they've been you're absorbing right. so much damage. The helmet just keeps regenerating, it does count regenerating. Into it, yeah, yeah. So it's really funny the way that happens. Ooh. Third <laughs> Lord for this game. Gotta so catch your breath, bro. We have to catch our breath. It's a matter of time. These two teams can execute. Oh, Sanford, picking up the rapid boots. Oh, he wants to go fast. Wants yeah, to go fast. He wants to be able to go to the opposite side of the lane much faster. And yowie, yowie, spot. yowie, Sanji, look at the position. Nice conceal. Yeah, we want to go right out. after Oheb. He's not going to go after Oheb. The knockoff coming in from the Lord. Edward zoning out a Benny Cutie. 15,000 HP, but Benny Cutie fires in. Forces Yue for the Nether Realm. Now, Echo, they know that the Nether Realm is not there. That's why they want to go in for this Lord. Yowie charging in. Not going to connect onto Renage. Still have the Hurricane. But still, look at Sensui with a double man taunt. And now Sanji oh. going right now. After Oheb and Carl TZ remains the king of the jungle and takes down the Oheb, Lord. Oheb's here. They Oheb's here. Fight. They oh. want to fight. Oh, oh, Sanji will fall down in the hands of Oheb, but Echo has the Lord. What will Blacklist do right now? Well, what? basically the same scenario as we saw earlier. Blacklist, they take the Lord, but they can't really make a push. I think that's yeah. exactly oh. what's happening here. Oh. Oh. Blacklist, For no heavy spin. Sanji. No heavy spin. No penalties. All right, okay. Uh, Yaoi's there. Yaoi's there. Yaoi's there. Yaoi's there. Yeah, he's back on the field. Lord, they have the well. Lord. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah, backup coming in for Echo. Oh, look at the damage coming out from Moheb. 1.5k. I, I love that right now, but 1. I also 5K. love that we also see Benny Cutie being very, very aggressive here. Yep. Y you saw that flicker in, right? Yeah, he attempted, the to, uh, he attempted to sort of like put pressure onto Blackness International, and Blackness, they gave up. Yeah. They, uh, they were like, okay, let's uh, let's back off, and Echo after that just controlled the Lord area. Sinsui, he did have the right angle, but unfortunately, the Lord's HP was still very, very high at that point, and Karthizi was able to insert a retribution damage to secure the objective here for Echo. Blacklist decided to clear this Lord early. 
Testing it out. Edward, as usual, on the side, looking for a way in. Carl Easy has the heavy spin. Yeah, we... He can use it if he wants to. Oh, and now the Lord has ouch, been ouch, 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 by Black. Ouch. Look at the damage coming in from Sensui. Successful defense for the agent. We're going to have to answer this oh. out. Edward, the bit the bottom lane. lane there on the bottom lane inhibitor turret. That's a big opening here, activated by Echo. Yeah, again, Echo committing all the things that they need. The ecosystem playing it to the blueprint down to the smallest detail that they can do. They are following that plan, and they are making Blackness bleed 20 minutes in, even though the late game is also favorable for Blackness with, with two scaling heroes. There is that factor of Echo, you know, just having a lot of uh, kits to force out the Netherrealm, the penalty zone, the heavy spin, the stolen Netherrealm, and of course, Yaoi forcing out the ult himself. And apart from that, the minion push that Echo had, taking down an inhibitor turret. This opens up a lot of opportunities for Echo to go for the Lord or even go for the signature Benny Cutie split push. Yeah. Now Blacklist are on the cusp here as well of just defending. As we do see Renny J having a hard time finding targets with the guy. Uh, yeah, we charging. Go in here since Sui is going to be the bait. Renny J, that's two people on the side. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, but finds OHEP! OHEP and the pure guy as well as another Nether Realm, but Carl TZ all the way from the back line, trying to pin down three members of Blacklist, and Echo as well has their own Nether Realm! Benicuti continuing to free hit, still alive! Renegade OHEP is now down, as well as Edward! Oh, oh, be in. And the blast for it! And the are down for Blacklist, and Echo still standing tall with five members! Oh, what happened in the turtle fight? Happened again! Another heavy spin from Carl TZ controlling the entire team! Heavy oh, Blacklist spin. International. Heavy That's spin out of nowhere. The debut game of Iaoi is looking good for the Orcas. Looking to end a game number three as they take down Iaoi. Benny Cutie went in for the tower lock. And Echo is still alive. This winning moment brought to you by our official sponsor, FWD Life Insurance and the Orcas. They find their footing in this series. Thou shalt ask the return of investment from the Kufra. Yaoi equalizes. I mean, they don't equalize, but they put themselves on the map here. Two to one. But you also have to come in Carl Easy again. Very important heavy spin.